Let's give hands to the praise and worship team. Y'all can do better than that. Wow. I know y'all reserve it for the best, right? Let's give our let's give our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ a hand. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Hello. Man, I'm telling you, it feels good to be out here once again, to be here, to uh, to share with you guys. Uh, how many of you had a great week? All right. I was getting ready to say that, my sister. The next question is, how many of you had some challenges this week? Guess what? Pastor George is raising his hand. Because I had some challenges this week also. I got to be honest with you guys, I walked in to this parking lot this morning heavy, okay? And I had to kind of get in a little place where I can be isolated so that I could just get God's mind on things, all right? So that as I stood before you guys, I could, stood, I could stand here, not in my strength, not in my power, but in the strength of the Lord. Any first time to be able to stand here and to speak according to what God has given to me. But I want to just share this with you because I want you to know that as I begin to speak to you, I'm not speaking only because I learned this in, in school, you know what I mean? Because I speak to you from a degree, all right? I want you to understand I speak to you from experience because I too, at one point sat in the same seats that you are sitting in. I lived in that building right there in 2008, all right? I had to go under the same subjection of what we know as homelessness, all right? I know what it means to have lost everything. I know what it means to have had to go through the process of becoming the man that God created me to be. But I learned to put my trust in Jesus. I've learned to put my trust in God. I've learned to depend upon His Holy Word. So, I just want you to understand that Paul said these words. He said a long time before I even showed up. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Alright? Is that fair? Now, how many of you have your Bibles? Let me see them Bibles, y'all. All right. We call this the sword of the spirit. All right. The reason why we call it the sword of the spirit is because it cuts. It cuts both ways. It will cut into the innermost part of your being. But I understand everybody doesn't have the luxury of having a Bible. So therefore, because of that, we've made it possible that each one of you that will walk through those gates right there would receive you stated it <laughs> would receive one of these right here bulletin right let me see your bulletins y'all wave your bulletin in the air like you really don't care all right now let me tell you, here at Club LA, <coughs> we call these switchblades. The reason why we call them switchblades, because they too will cut both ways. Now, Pastor, what are you talking about? You must have lost your mind. Okay, let me break it down. See, in the front of this bulletin, you will see today's scripture. All right? What does the Word of God say about His Word? He says, my Word is sharper than, in a, than a two-edged sword. Alright? So all you need to know is the Word. Alright? Y'all awfully quiet. I, I, that's right, it's hot. It's hot over here. Alright. So listen. The bottom line is this. I, I didn't come here to entertain nobody. I came here just to deliver a message. Alright? So turn with me now to front page. 
And those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me, uh, join with me at Hebrews chapter 4. You got it? All right. There's a student right here. All right. Hebrews chapter 4, and we're going to begin with verses 14 through 16. You guys mind if I move this? Can you help me out for a second, please? You ready? Just bear with me a moment. When when the uh, Bible fell to the ground. I know where the scripture is, but I'm looking for my notes. Oh, what the word of God say? The word is what? Near you. And we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for this, another opportunity to stand here on your behalf and to speak what you have given to me. Even right now as your vessel, I am yielded to you, to be used by you and to to speak only what you speak. I died to myself so that you might live. I pray that as you anointed me to speak your word, I pray that you would, speak, you would anoint every person that is under the sound of my voice, whether they be here in this parking lot, whether they be in the street, or whether they be up in the windows somewhere on, uh, on any of these buildings. I pray, Father, that you would anoint each person to hear your word, but that they don't just become hearers, but ultimately they become doers of your word. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so uh, the title of today's message is, We Have a High Priest. Somebody say High Priest. High Priest. What is it, why is it necessary for us to understand that we have a high priest. First of all, let's um, let's talk about that a little bit. All right, now high priest. The first time we even hear of a high priest, it is in Genesis. The father of faith, his name was Abraham. We know that God had chosen him in order for his chosen people to become blessed. And we know that through Abraham's obedience, okay, righteousness was awarded to him. Somebody say hello. Whew. Already, it's on me already. Now, I want to go back for a second. 
Because what I said was because of Abraham's obedience, that righteousness was awarded to him. All right? Notice what I did not say. I did not say that because of his disobedience. Hello. So obedience is key. We're going to break that down in a minute. Now, through Abraham, and after he had obeyed God by sacrificing his son, unfortunately, that time will not allow me to really break this down for those of you that don't know the story, all right? That according to the Old Testament, there was a man, okay? He was from a land called Ur of the Chaldeans, okay? Understand that in order for God to bless the earth, he had to choose a people. He had to choose a nation that he would declare and that he would consider righteous. And so therefore, he chose Abraham. Now through Abraham, he was promised a son. And that son would be called Isaac. All right? And then from Isaac, he would also receive a grandson whose name would become Jacob. And those of you that may know, I want you to know that Jacob, later on, when God chose him, what did he do? He changed his name. He changed his name from Jacob to Israel. We're going someplace, everybody. We're going someplace. You ever had a name change in life? Most of the time, when you see that there's a name change, it means that there is an identity change. Oh, Pastor Jones, I thought we were talking about high priests. I am talking about high priests. Because through Abraham, there is a man by the name of Melchizedek, the king of Salem, who appeared before Abraham. And this is where we see the first time that Melchizedek appears. I'm pausing for a moment. Now later on, if we go into the next book of the Bible, which is Exodus, we will see that now Moses is chosen by God to become the deliverer of this same nation called Israel. And those of you that know the story, Israel was in a place called Egypt, which is considered a place of Bondage. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a little review right now, okay? Now, bondage in Egypt is type and shadow of where we come from, okay? Where we come from is a place called sin. <laughs> the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter how good you are. And I got news for you, it doesn't matter how bad you are. All right? We were all born in sin. We were all born in unrighteousness. We were all born in sin. I got news for you. Every last one of you, I can look in your faces. Not one of us, including myself, is exempt. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, how is it possible that we can come out of that position and come into a place that God considers righteous. This is what we're going to talk about right now, okay? Because according to the children of Israel, God had instructed Moses to choose his brother Aaron to become a priest. 
And how many of you know the duties of a priest? The duties of a priest is two things I'm going to name. To make sacrifices. What else? To bless, yes. Anybody else over here? Hey, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's back up for a second. Do we have any anybody that comes from Catholicism? Any Catholics? Nope. Okay, so so watch this, watch this, watch this. When the, the Catholic faith, what they do is they come to the priests. Okay? And what do they do? They bring their sins to the priest. Okay? And the priest will do what? Forgive. There you go. Hello, somebody. So now we see that there's a complete generation that have come up under the understanding that in order for their sins to be forgiven, they had to go before the priest. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if that was still the case? I would I'd be so tired because the, <laughs> man, I have to I have to listen to every one of your confessions. Y'all wear me out. Okay? But I, I'm just being honest with y'all, okay? But I'm so glad that God saw something better. Alright? Now let's let's look at the word of God. Let's see what the Word of God says about this. Because don't ever take just what the pastor has to say. Don't, don't take what any man or woman has to say. Because sometimes, how many of y'all know that that same man or woman of God would lead you astray? So you want to make sure that if we're going to speak, we're going to speak from that Word of God. Alright? So here it is. If we go to Leviticus chapter 9, we're going to read verses 5 through 8. Now I'm going to think you're going to find this very interesting, okay? It says, So they brought what Moses commanded before the tabernacle of meeting, and all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, This is a thing which the Lord commanded you to do, and the glory of the Lord will appear to you. And Moses said to Aaron, Go to the altar, offer your sin offering and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself and for the people. Offer this offering of the people and make atonement for them as the Lord commanded. Aaron therefore went to the altar and killed the calf of the sin offering which was for himself. In other words, what Aaron and the rest of the Levitical priesthood had to do is that not only did they take the sins of the people before God, they had to make a sacrifice. They had to choose a calf. They had to choose a, a lamb, all right? In some cases, they had to, they had to choose a, a dove, a bird, uh, or, or some other animal in order to cause blood. <coughs> cause blood to be shed for the sinner's sin, okay? But then, God... Decided that I need a priest. I need not just an ordinary priest. I need a high priest. I need a priest. Um, let me back up for a second. Because something very important about this priest. The priest <coughs> had to be without sin. This, the priest couldn't just be any ordinary person. They had to be without sin, okay? Now watch this. As they went to God, they had to go to a place, not just in the inner court, but they had to go to a place called the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies is the place where God dwelt. 
And, and let me tell you something about, about this. That priest had bells. He had bells attached to him. And he also talked to me now. I hear you in the back. You hear him, right? You hear him? <laughs> and so watch this. He also had a rope. A rope was attached to him as well. Now let me help you now. Let me help you. Because if that priest was not right, if that priest had sinned, the moment he entered into God's presence, he would drop dead. So therefore, understand all the other priests, they had to listen for the bell. And if all of a sudden there was silence, guess what? They knew <laughs> they lost another one. And they had to drag the body back out. So here it is now. Let's speed back up. God ordained one person once and for all to become the high priest. Let's go there. Hebrews 3 verses 3 verses 1 through 6. <laughs> Hebrews 3 says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him to the Father. As Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house for every house is built by someone but he who built all things is God if Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are. Did you all hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I'm going to read it again. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. <laughs> You see where I'm going now? No. Where I'm going is to, for each and every one of us to understand the foundation of our faith. We must understand the foundation of our very confession. What is our confession? Our confession is that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. Amen. Our confession is that we open up our mouths and we ask him to come into our lives to forgive us of our sins. We acknowledge that he is the son of God and guess what takes place? Salvation, Salvation is given to each one who will believe. Hallelujah. It's just as simple as that. Amen. Now why, why, why would I take the time to share a message like this? Because right now, unfortunately, we are in a day and age in which people have become doubtful of their faith. People are in a position now where they begin to deny even their faith. Especially here in America, I don't know what's going on here in America. People, listen, you know, what's that song? I'm about to lose my mind up in here. DMX. You know what I'm saying? No, for real, people just losing their minds. How all of a sudden you gonna doubt that Jesus Christ is Lord? That Jesus Christ is the Son of God? He is coming soon. And I want you all to understand that the reason why I'm here. The reason why the other pastors are here is because God has sent us here to skid row. 
to extend to you the same invitation that he has made available to every person on this planet earth that Jesus Christ is the son of God now that's the confession now let me break down I'm going to close this down and I'm going to give you these two last scriptures the first one is found in Hebrews 5 Hebrews 5 verses 1 through 6 speaks about the qualifications of high priesthood let me tell you why our Jesus qualifies. Y'all ready? For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God. Now, let me stop there for a minute because, again, if we have any Bible scholars in the house, you know what John chapter 1 says. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Somebody say hello. Hello. Now, verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son. Now, going back to Hebrews, it says right here, For men in things pertaining to God, that He may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Now, 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 now hold on now. Sacrifices for sins? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. What does begotten mean? Begotten. His only begotten son meaning that his son he himself, him himself, had cre he had given his only son, his only son, okay, he has given to mankind. Nobody else, all right? If you know anything about God, in the beginning, understand God is three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all right? And understand that the second person, which is the Word, the Word of God became flesh. Alright? God gave up His Son to become human flesh. His Word says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the Son of man that thou visitest him? For he had made him a little lower than the angels. Because of this, he is required as for the people, so also for himself, to offer sacrifices for sin. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. All right? I'm done. God says in Matthew 22 verse 44, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. My praise and worship team is here. Those that are part of the prayer team, come on up as well. I fulfilled my assignment. I delivered the message. Now, now, what's important is to understand that God's word says, according to Isaiah 55, 11, he says, so shall my word be that goeth forth from my mouth. It shall not return to be void. So therefore, it's knowing that that word has an assignment. That word has a target. And even right now, you may be sitting there 
even though you may be like huh, kicking it, or you may be a little, you know, uncomfortable, you may be a little hot, doesn't make no difference, you might be leaving a little hungry. But understand that in the midst of all of that, there is a unrest in your spirit because you know the Spirit of God has spoken to you today. Am I able to articulate the Word of God? It has everything on the other hand to do with the Spirit of God who is speaking to you even right now. Yes, sir. Now, understand that the Word of God has your name. <laughs> your name is attached to this message. So therefore, the Word of God says today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. So therefore, remember this, that today is the day of salvation. All right? Don't wait to tomorrow what you can do today, because tomorrow may never come. I've been here now for over eight years, and I've seen them come, and I've seen them go. And I don't mean leave just skid row. I'm talking about leaving this earth. I hate to be like that, but hey, let's, let's, let's keep it real. Tomorrow is not promised. And I don't say that to try to coerce you or try to make you afraid or anything like that. I just need you to understand this is real. So therefore, what am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is that there's an invitation that's being extended to you right now to come before the Lord and to receive His gift. Number one, He's offering a gift of salvation. He's offering you life. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you, but I got to the point in my life where I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I made a decision that, guess what? I'm going to do it God's way. And as a result, I saw God actually turn my life around completely. I saw him do something in my life that I didn't even know that he could do in my life. And because of that, I am forever different, I'm forever changed. Now, if any of you are in that place now where you know that, Pastor, I'm going to be honest with you, I need change in my life. If that's you, I want you to come on up out of your seats, I want you to come up here in the front, and I want to pray with you. 